Earth's Greatest Defender. Snark is an all-ages comic book that combines science fiction, history, social commentary, human interest, and humor. With Snark 2, the continuing adventures of Snark, our favorite intergalactic traveler and his cosmic staff, Snark must find a way to save humanity from the reptilian inhabitants of his home planet, Maron. So with me today is Dr. Bruce Solheim and Gary and Laura Dumb. So thank you so much for joining me today to talk about this awesome comic. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks, Sarah. No problem. So for those of us who, you know, I, I'm familiar with SNARK, but for those of us who aren't familiar with, with SNARK, give us a little background about how this comic came to be and then where you're headed with number two. Okay. Well, it's, a, I guess I'll chime in there. It's a, it's a long story. So I know I, I got to tell a long story very in a very <laughs> quick amount of time, short amount of time, because uh, it's really 37 years in the making, the SNARK. It started as a vision I had in a guard tower at a military prison. I was working as a guard in uh, the U.S. Army in West Germany when it was mm -hmm. East and West Germany. And I, you know, I had this idea of a, a alien human hybrid. Well, I, it didn't really flesh out until, you know, come out until I was working uh, in 1982 or ni yeah, 1982 at a school newspaper in Butte, Montana, Montana Tech. I was an engineering student and uh, I decided to uh, write and illustrate a comic strip called Snark, then <laughs> spelled with a K. And I got five uh, strips out and uh, it was very popular among the students and faculty and staff. And, and then I flunked out of engineering school. So that was the end of Snark phase one. And it didn't come back until, uh, it was always in the back of my mind. I wanted to do something with it, but until January of 2019, when my second eldest son, Byron, who is an engineer, so he became what I could not become. He, uh, he crafted and, and uh, did a 3D or whatever you call it with his 3D printer. He made a bust of the original Snark <laughs> character and, uh, and then presented it to uh -huh. me as a late Christmas present in January, 2019. Well, I was really inspired to, to then do what I always wanted to do, which was to create mm -hmm. a comic book of the character. And of course, by that time, yeah, Gary and I had been working together on other projects, including a uh, history anti-text book and some paranormal stuff and um, paranormal books. And uh, so I asked Gary if he would be willing to illustrate Snark and it would be my lifelong dream to, uh, to publish a comic book. And he luckily agreed. And so did Laura uh, to do the, uh, the color and the text or the, you know, the, lettering so uh so that's kind of how how it happened <laughs> wonderful now gary and laura what was what was it that drew you uh, other than your existing friendship to work on snark oh, i've been a science fiction fan fan paranormal fan probably for 50 years so getting in on this seemed uh, the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And when he throws something on my desk, I just agree. And <laughs> we've always had this thing as to where we like getting in different projects. And that's mm -hmm. one nice thing about being a freelance you know, artist or a freelance graphic artist or however, whatever title you want to give us. Um, it, you know, we get a lot of different interesting things to do. And so our life has really been uh, really fun. And this was just something that everything about it was good. And um, we, we just, I mean, I, I just said, sure. No, mm -hmm. put that on my desk. I'll color it because it's fun. This is what I do. I, I color things. <laughs> and there is, there is that aspect about the character of Snark. Right. And the cosmic staff of being benevolent aliens and the idea of the snark being a kind of naive to the ways of the earth and as such his voyage of discovery coming here to be the vanguard of an invasion and finding out hey 
these hurt people ain't so bad. <laughs> Come. Yeah. I remember when Bruce and I first spoke, we were talking about the anthropological nature of snark and how exciting it is to kind of delve into humanity you know, our, our own species from an outsider's perspective and, and approaching it that way. And, and I just think that's really wonderful and something that science fiction could stand to see a little bit more of. I mean, invading aliens are fun, <laughs> but it's kind of fun to, to see the benevolence, like you said. Well, and also snark is a little bit, almost a little bit childlike because he doesn't know, like Gary said, doesn't know the ways of the, the earth. So mm -hmm. to him, everything is kind of new and, a, and I guess exciting. I don't know, but that sort of is how a child looks at things too. They kind of get excited about it and Snark gets excited about things. At mm -hmm. least I think he does. <laughs> oh, no, he, he, you guys are right on. And I, I, you know, I, I like to deal with social issues, but I don't want to do it in a pedantic way you know, that would, uh, where we would lose people, right. but yet I still think they're important to deal with. So it's safe to do it. That, as you said, Sarah, you can, you can do it w through the eyes of a child is, or the eyes right. of an innocent, or as Gary explained at one time, the innocent abroad kind of genre, you know. Mm -hmm. well, you where, always need that little bit of humor or that little bit of, yes. of, of you know, where people are able to relate to, to the, the character. I mean, a little sidebar that will take 10 seconds. Our, our series of paintings that we did, we used classic monsters. Mm -hmm. And to like get our message across, everybody knows those classic monsters. So it is kind of a thing that you, you want some kind of friendly um, uh, um, thing that's going to draw people in. And I think Snark definitely draws people in. Mm -hmm. It's important to have that. There's nothing friendlier than Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> well, to me. <laughs> well, to me too. And that's the other aspect. As an artist, I've pretty much, from an early age, felt like an outsider, an observer of this existence. I mean, obviously, I've made connections here on this planet. But the fact of the matter is, there's sometimes when I sit and I look at what humans do, and I go, I'm really a part of this. No. Yeah, mm -hmm. I am. Yeah. yeah, I think that's, that's true for a lot of creators. I, almost everyone I speak to, especially in speculative fiction, I think we have that idea that we aren't somehow we aren't as connected to humanity as a whole as it seems like other people are, whether or not that's just, you know, our, our perception or not. And I, I think that is often what drives a lot of people to create is to create these worlds where maybe they might be included more or they have a better understanding of what it is to be human. I, I, I think you're all right. And I, I think of that, you know, of, of, of Bertolt Brecht, who said that art is not a reflection it's a hammer on society. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think that that's the role that Gary and Laura and all the other artists and graphic artists and writers. And I mean, that's what we're doing. You know, we, we just do what we can. And to, musicians. To you got to throw musicians in there too. Musicians too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Artists of all types. And, yeah. uh, and I, I also, you know, the, the fun thing about Snart, yeah, he's kind of the straight man to the cosmic staff. The cosmic staff is the is the humorous guy uh, in this piece. And the cool thing about Snart too is you find out the origins uh, and uh, the origins of Snark and the origins of the cosmic staff. And it's kind of interesting and surprising. And and also we introduce a new character uh, who's going to have. I guess I'm kind of looking forward maybe to if we ask that question at the end here but mm -hmm. uh, she uh, is a, a, a female character uh, who's going to have her own comic book and uh, called Dr. Jekyll Alien Hunter. Oh, fine. So, so there's going to be a spin-off. Before there's even Snark 3 there will be a spin-off comic and uh, I think I've convinced uh, Gary and Laura next year <laughs> that we'll work on that but you know they they have other things to do too not just 
sitting around waiting for, for me to send them stuff. Well, you know, Bruce, <laughs> the one thing that, that kind of, um, that, that I was thinking of the other day, and next year is great because, yes, we've got other things that we would like to um, get organized in our house. But um, Harvey Picard, that's how he started out. He, yes. he did one comic a year, and he was faithful in always getting that one comic, you know, a, a year done. And I think that that's really doable. And, and people, as with Harvey, they don't forget a good comic, you know. No. So I, I think that um, I, I, I think that that's a good plan. But we can certainly talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, th- I think a lot of people are seeing, especially with like streaming services and how the way we interact with consumable media, it's, it's completely changed. I mean, definitely over the last five years, but obviously, in, you know, since, since 2020, we're all at home or, or should be. Yeah. And <laughs> sorry, I had to, had to get that jab in. <laughs> but, you know, I, I think it's interesting to see how that's really affecting publishing, you know, both in more traditional markets and in more independent markets, because the, the push for rapid fire creative work, you know, isn't, it, it's not sustainable for a lot of us. And I think people are realizing that more as we're all facing a huge amount of burnout. So it's, it's exciting to see people dialing it back a little bit and focusing more on the things that they love that rejuvenate them and their work. And I think it makes for a better product. It does. It does. For sure. Yeah. I, I, I really enjoy working with, with uh, Gary and Laura and also George, our editor who couldn't be with us today. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, you know, going back to Harvey Picard, you know, that's kind of interesting backstory too, because that's uh, how I initially contacted Gary, although it wasn't about a comic, but it was actually about, comic book pages in my history anti-textbook and I had this concept I went for each chapter there were 12 chapters modern American history anti-textbook I call it an anti-textbook because I don't like the corporate textbooks that that were forced to use and I, yeah. I refused to do it I didn't want to read them so I know my students didn't want to read them so I created my own and I I had a copy of American Splendor Harvey mm-hmm. Picard's uh you know from the 70s mm-hmm. and I looked through it, and of course, you know, you always notice uh, Robert Crumb, you know, but I looked at Gary's art, and I go, this is, I I like his art a lot, and he reminds me a lot of my friend growing up, Larry Jost, who has that, that retro, very clean style, comic book style that I love, and it just, it just spoke to me, so I just, on an off chance, I I think I sent you just a, uh, a cold call email, and Gary said, let's, let's talk about it. Let me see the manuscript. And then that's kind of what started it. So Harvey Picar really got us together. You know, Harvey you... Picar really has, has given us a lot of work. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> you know, God bless him because uh, um, it, it was just, what is that word? Synchronicity. I mean, mm-hmm. everything just sort of happened. Gary had a, a piece in the May show that one of my friends bought. The May Show was a big local art show at the Cleveland Museum of Art. And one of my friends, and it was a big deal to get in. One of my friends bought it and she worked at the VA hospital and she had it hanging in her office. And Harvey walked in one day and he said, hey, the guy that did that, um, can he draw anything else besides Popeye? Because it was a Popeye. (laughs) And she goes, sure, I'll, I'll hook you up with him, you know? That's how that happened. So that was just like in the stars, you know? And yeah. since then, we have met more people. We have gotten more work. We have, you know, and they're all good people, you know? Mm-hmm. So it, there's something. And yes, Gary's work is definitely almost of the pulp things, almost of the, the 40s and 30s. Do you think, Bruce? I love it. Yes, it's a, it's a it's a throwback, but it's a classic style that classic, will yeah. always be popular. You know, I look at comic books today, and it's it's very stylized, uh, and it's it's almost too. For, I, I like it. I mean, I appreciate the artwork, but it's almost too busy. Mm-hmm. And it gets in the way sometimes. I think of the story. You know, not every panel has to be the you know the most incredible splash page ever you know created you know with action and i mean you you can tell a story in in more subtle ways 
Well, and, I think this, this is sort of a discussion that we have because sometimes he is so used to working in black and white that I have to sometimes reel him in going, you do realize that this comic is in color. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, honest, we have learned a lot working together mm -hmm. on these comics, and I think that they're only going to get better because we're learning how each other works. I have one studio on one side of the house. He's got the studio on the other side of the house. This is how we've worked for years. And I, I don't, <laughs> it's a good way to do it. <laughs> yeah, that, but the that thing division. is now, because of Bruce, and we did a couple things with Harvey, but that was sort of easier. You know, now working with Bruce doing a comic book that is like, the last one was, well, Snark 2 was 60 pages. So that was yeah. a lot of conversation that we had. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, I, I will say that nicely, conversation. Um, no, but we learned a lot about how it works in color and how things yeah. work in black and white. And I agree, Bruce, his stuff in black and white is beautiful. Um, we don't need so much when it goes in color because the color adds another dimension. Just, yeah. just as an aside, that aspect of having two studios on the opposite sides yeah. of the house does does tend to prevent bloodshed. <laughs> I I also work with my spouse for for, for my day job, so I I, I understand that. <laughs> See, and it's universal. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's a rumor. There's a rumor, Sarah, that you carry a machete. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, we both do. That's the, that's the trouble. I, I think Bloodshed. for Gary and Laura, the the cats are the intermediaries. Yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Send notes through the through the cat collars. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bruce, um, you know, you you have a huge breadth of work, and I'm curious because I I write pretty much strictly in in prose. How is writing a comic different for you? I mean, obviously, you're, it, it's much more collaborative because you're working with a team here. Yeah. But how is it different from outline or, or the structure? Or do you write it as a, as a novel form first? No, I write it as a, as a comic book, like a storyboard, like a, mm -hmm. you know, you would storyboard a, a screenplay. Right, of course. And I, I deliver to Gary and Laura a very rough, you know, I, I even have panels, but a lot of times I'll do rough sketches or concepts and I, you know, I don't take a whole lot of time on it. The art of it, of whatever I, I can, I'm a frustrated comic book artist. Right? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and I, I don't trust myself to do it, you know, to produce anything, but I, uh, um, and sometimes I'll use photographs or scenes and I'll, I'll make suggestions to Gary and then he takes it and they make it beautiful and they're experts in sequential art. So they know how it has to flow. And I think oftentimes he does take my suggestions. Other times he, you know, goes a different direction and it's always better. Mm -hmm. Very rarely do I say, well, maybe it should be this, but you know, there's a give and take there, but uh, it's, it's kind of a symbiotic relationship. I think he gets what I'm trying to do and I get what he's doing. So it makes it every project that we've done gets a little bit easier in that sense, although they might be more complex. Right. Uh, the, the work together part of it. Uh, is is symbiotic, and I and I really enjoy working with both of them. And and when it comes to color, yes, it does add that other uh, that other dimension. And if you look at the colors in Snark Two, they just they just vibrate off of the page. Yes, I know. I was looking at the samples, and it's just stunning. Yeah, she uh, you know Laura's brilliant with color. That's Laura's specialty, making vibrate. <laughs> yes, to vibrate your eyeballs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how has because Snark Two just just came out in March? Now, how has this past year or year and a half, with all of the things that are going on in the world, how has that influenced the story of Snark and what you are hoping to put out into the world in the future? Well, I think I think it makes it even more important because there there is some time there is a couple of timely stories within snark to uh dealing with a uh well when the when the reptilians actually do launch their attack against us it's going to seem very familiar oddly well not oddly familiar but very familiar to mm -hmm. to people uh, reading i didn't want to give it away too much but 
Um, and then just the idea of, uh, of trying to get people to work together and, you know, getting the humans to help him help them, you know, really it's, that's what he's trying to do, him and the cosmic staff. And uh, it, it, I think, and, and going back to that, the previous question about what's different about writing a comic book, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've written poetry and songs and, and uh, I wrote a novel for middle grade readers and a lot of nonfiction being a historian, you know, so I, I'll just say this, I, the most, the thing I'm most proud of, of all the things I've, I've published 10, 12 books and 10 plays and five have been produced is, are these comic books. It's the thing I'm most proud of. And, <laughs> and the reason for that is because I owe everything to comic books. And I think Gary and I have talked about this before that I learned how to read because of comic books. I, w I struggled mm -hmm. to learn how to read as a young boy. So I, I feel like it's an homage to the art form, to sequential art. Mm -hmm. And I feel very close to it. And it's, it's very close to my heart. So that, that sense of accomplishment, and it couldn't be done. It, it's kind of like a play in a sense in that you can't, a playwright can't put on the play themselves. You know, they need a director, producer, actors, all the, you know, everything that goes with it, collaborative. Okay. And, and it's the same with a, with a comic book. You, you rely on everybody doing their part. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the heavy lifting, of course, is the art. Uh, because, you know, they, if you have a great story, but your art is crap, that's not going to help. <laughs> if know, it doesn't you, vibrate your eyeballs. You know, so. You've got a good team here, I, I'm sure. I mean, I, I know. Yeah. And my mom would just give comics, but also books. And we would read the comics. I have vivid memories of reading like Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge sitting on a summer's day on our front steps and she would do some of the characters oh. and I would do the other characters. You did that when we got married too. Yeah, I did. We would read the Sunday paper and he would just do these these funny voices and it was um it was a throwback. I never knew that. You no, know, I've even got a funnier voice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh. well I think it's it's interesting too Bruce what you were saying about how you have worked in nonfiction and poetry and in a lot of ways it seems like snark is bringing those things together not so much as it, it yes. being separate because when you're writing a comic you're you're using far fewer words and every word has to be intentional in a way that you know, you, you've a bit more leeway with prose. And then so many of the influences to Snark come from history and come from nonfiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he visits historical places and, and uh, deals with contemporary issues. And, uh, but I, it's an all ages comic book. I always like to make, and that's something Gary and I talked about and, and Laura talked about early on and George, that I wanted to make it all ages because uh, I didn't want anybody to be excluded and I thought we could do it, we could pull it off and let adults be interested too, because we could do it with the inspiration of like the, the Rocky and Bullwinkle show, Yay. which I loved as a kid. And, you know, that show watching it now as an adult is much different than when you were a kid. But yet when you're a kid, you loved it too. And you love it in a different way when you're an adult, because it's, it's written in a way, it's produced in a way that where adults find it, you know, they find the hidden humor that the kids might not. So that, that, that's what I was shooting for uh, with, with Snark. And humor is a big part of it. And I know Gary has a great sense of humor. He, in fact, he has contributed some of the, of the puns and funny <laughs> things in the comic book that I didn't have in the original, you know, when I'd written it and he suggested something and I always go with it because he's got a very good sense of humor. Thanks. There is that aspect too of with coincidentally uncle scrooge that was the best ones at least were written and drawn by the genius carl barks he mm. heard his stories so that it would be exactly like snark that it can be appreciated by a child can be more appreciated by a teenager and can be most appreciated by adults. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and that's so true. 
You know, it's kind of funny. And this is a secret that I've never revealed to any buddy that's interviewed uh, uh, that I, I kind of see, you know, Ginger told me, she said, I, I think you're kind of like snark, you know, and, and if that's true, if I am snark, then that Gary, that makes you the cosmic staff. Oh God, you know, that's true. <laughs> Cause I'm the straight man. Oh God, I take that as high praise. Yeah. When oh, good. Dated, I'm glad. I, it's meant as high praise. When we were dating, Gary got a, a, a best friend that he shared an apartment with, and they were like the king of puns. I mean, the two of them, when they were, so he has been doing this forever, Bruce. Yeah, <laughs> so he's the cosmic staff. There yeah, we go. That's secret revealed to your listeners. <laughs> you heard Gosh. it here first, folks. <laughs> yeah, you heard funny. it here first, exactly. That is so funny. <laughs> so give us, I mean, you, you already sort of hinted at it, so that's exciting, but give us a little glimpse of what's coming up next for each of you and where people can find your work. Oh. Yeah, Gary and Laura, you guys go first. Well, there's a big secret that's not a secret. This past May, Abrams Comics Arts released a graphic novel that I did with a local author, Scott McGregor. Its title is Fire on the Water, and it's about the building of Cleveland's infrastructure under Lake Erie to bring clean water to Cleveland. This historical-based graphic novel is set 100 years ago, and the infrastructure that was built then is still being used. This graphic novel was released in the middle of a pandemic, as mm -hmm. you might have noticed. And so, all promotion for it online, no in-person promotion. So, it has been, it has gotten good reviews, but the places that it has sold mostly to our libraries. Thank goodness yeah. for libraries mm -hmm. and librarians. I just want to say something about that because graphic novels and comic books are really becoming a part of libraries because they are finding that as Gary and Bruce young people like to learn how to read and like to learn things from that, that kind of a visual word, um, it, you know, uh, thing. They like mm -hmm. to learn um, from graphic novels. So they have become a big part of, of libraries, which is, is, is very nice. Yeah, thank goodness. Yeah. The one I'm working on doing a series of illustrations for another local author for a book that is tentatively titled Drugs and Other Things to Do in <laughs> Oh, gosh. And the illustrations, I'm looking at them up on Gary's wall right now. They're, they're fabulous. And, um, you know, he, and that's what I mean. He, he does things from one, you know, one side and then he goes clear to the other side and, <laughs> and and just does all these great, um, great things. I, I no, I, I mean the, the great drawings. They're 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 just he, yeah. He's he's gifted. <laughs> Although you know, fantastic. after fifty years of doing art together, we do have an awful lot of art in this house. <laughs> <laughs> and what about you? Okay, I'm the painter. <laughs> I, I'm the color girl. I have always done paintings. I have always um, uh, been more on the easel and the acrylic paint or the oil paint. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, we, we just finished a show at uh, Cleveland State University of all of our environmental and social environment paintings. And those were the ones I was ex explaining that we um, used the uh, monsters as the oh yeah as the foil um and it, it closed today it is still online and in a virtual walkthrough that you can walk through and, and still see the show although the show closed today and it did very well for being in the middle of a pandemic mm -hmm. um but uh it 
it, it, it's an interesting thing. So Gary, what, what, how we did it is Gary would do the thinking part of it. We would discuss that. And then he would do a sketch in a black and white as he does. Then he would send it over to my area and then we would put it on a 36 by 36 canvas and I would paint that. Oh, that's the cool. paintings that are in the show now. So um, that's, uh, that's, that's my part of, uh, of our life together, I guess, um, artistically. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it is exciting. And you know what? We're, we're lucky. We just are grateful every day for like mm -hmm. what we have been able to, to do and how we've been able to live. What a partnership, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> and Bruce, what, what's coming up for you this, this coming year? Well, as of this morning, I was working on an, another paranormal book. Uh, it's going to be uh, a very interesting account of my uh, contact with an ancient alien mystic. Ooh. Oh yes, and, uh, it's I've called been Anzar, forward to this. <laughs> and uh, it's so that's going to come out later this year. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I've already uh, put together uh, Doctor Jekyll, Alien Hunter, for whenever Gary and Laura can can have time. So that'll next year, hopefully. Mm -hmm. uh, so that I'll I've handed it off to them to look at. So they, you know, they, I think I kind of piqued their interest, but they got to <laughs> into yeah. their schedule, you know. And I and I I'm willing to wait for good art. But believe me, mm -hmm. that's. Uh, you know, I'm not going to rush any of that quality stuff. Um, and so those are the things I'm doing. I'm, I'm, uh, people can find me at BruceOlofSolheim.com, uh, all the plays that we're doing. And oh, by the way, I should mention yes, Snark. Yes, mention that. Snark is going to be an animated feature uh, as well, because we're, I've been doing, uh, we've done four online stream plays during the pandemic. I got a mm -hmm. bunch of actor friends and, uh, we are going to do an animated feature. Um, so Gary and Laura have supplied our technical director slash director, Jordan Martin, with the, uh, you know, the snark art. And we're going to have the actors do the voices. And, uh, and anyway, that's going to be a, a probably come out in like, in like serial form, like, mm -hmm. you know, little five to nine minute video things animated. So, yeah, Snark is going to be uh, an animated Yay. feature, too. Yay. That'll be available online. and Yeah, that's so, that, so that's, that's the stuff that we're, we're doing there. So it's, it's all very exciting. Well, that's wonderful. About the serial aspect of it, Bruce. I like that a lot. Yeah, I mean, everybody can, can, can give five to, you know, nine minutes of their time to, to, you know, to see if they dig it or not. Yeah. And I think they will. And that's kind of how, you know, it came out. I didn't really plan it that way with Snark, but all the Snark stories within the comic book and, def and within the graphic novel, there are, like in, in Snark 2, there's 16 different stories in there. All mm -hmm. of them have a thread, but they're, they're all in different locations and, and I, different things. I got to say, way. Bruce, that was genius. <laughs> no, well, I, it was, I'm serious. It was Inspired by, by extraterrestrials, perhaps. I don't know. what <laughs> something. It was something. I'm not going to take credit for it, but Nowadays, thank you. Nowadays, with everything being so instantaneous with phones and with, you know, like, a, you, I mean, little snippets of things, you know, in order to do that, um, it, I, I think it was genius. So kudos mm -hmm. to you. <laughs> well, thank you. And I'm looking forward to that, that animation thing. And I know uh, Gary and Laura are too. Yeah. Well, now, now I am as well. So. <laughs> <laughs> there is another aspect to doing the shorter pieces in my mind, to my mind, having, you know, 50 years of delving into comics. It mm -hmm. is very difficult to write something that is short yeah. and sweet yeah. and gets to the point and then link all of those pieces uh, again kudos well well thank you and i and i have to give a nod to my adhd i think that <laughs> contributes to it well you know? good hey whatever <laughs> works i just wanted to thank all three of you for joining me today and having such wonderful insight into the sort of very different world of, of comic writing. It's fun. Thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. 
I look forward to seeing all of the new projects that you're coming up with. So, This has been the Amphibian Press podcast. I'm V.S. Holmes, and with me today was the incredible team behind Snark Comics. Thank you so much for listening.